By far the most common indication for tracheostomy placement in ICU is prolonged mechanical ventilation. And if you are doing ICU rotation, for sure you will get one of these patients. Now with all these advances, with all our ability to support patients, they can stay on mechanical ventilation for longer period of times. Now, the definition of prolonged mechanical ventilation also is debatable. Some say as early as one week, and some say two weeks, and some say three weeks. But I, I believe it's not unreasonable to start the discussion with family about the tracheostomy placement as early as one week. Actually, as early as one day or two days, which means this should be individualized. Again, maybe a patient we just extubated after a difficult weaning, and then next day he got reintubated because he has a very weak cough and a lot of secretions, and he's reintubated. Then we don't have to wait for another seven days from Immediately after that, I will talk to the family about placement of tracheostomy. But these are the general rules. So the most common indication is prolonged mechanical ventilations. Patients who is been intubated for these period of times. Now, once you start thinking about this patient that may need a tracheostomy, few things you need to start thinking about. Most importantly is family discussion. The earlier you start family discussion, the better, because families sometimes need two, three, four days to make a decision. So doing that early will give you, uh, uh, will earn you some time with taking care of patients, of these patients. Now, before that, make sure that this patient will benefit. Is there a clear benefit from this? What I mean, if we have a terminal patient at the end of his life, terminal cancer or terminal disease, that we feel placing a tracheostomy is inappropriate, inappropriate and will just prolong the patient's suffering, but the family wants to keep going, I don't think we should proceed with the tracheostomy and we should keep talking to the family about there is no point of going through the procedure because the whole point of doing the tracheostomy is that we want the patient to get better, to get a better quality of life, to get better in a way he resume his life with good quality of life, right? Eventually. So that's very important before we initiate any discussion. Is the patient is the right candidate? Forget about the relative and temporary contraindications that we may have. But if we have a case like this, I would rather not to proceed with the tracheostomy. Even if the family insists, I will keep talking to them. I will get other consultants involved if possible, sometimes risk management, um, because I feel it's not the right decision for the patient, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing before we start family discussion is should talk to other consultants involved in the case, especially the intensivist or pulmonary critical care medicine and all other consultants actually, are they okay? Are they on the same page with me with proceeding with family discussion for a tracheostomy? The last things and the worst thing we need is to have conflicting opinions between consultants because the family will listen to my discussion and when the other physician comes, if the other physician tells them, no, he doesn't need it, then we are in big trouble now. The, the, the whole trust between us and the family kind of uh, disrupted. And it's not going to be easy to initiate that discussion again. So make sure everybody on the same page. So when you go and talk to the family, everybody will say the same. Now, what the family needs to know about tracheostomy. So family for sure will ask why, right? Why do we need, the patient is already intubated, why we need 
to take the tube out of his mouth and put it in his neck right so that's very important and let's talk about it that will bring me to let's say ET tube and tracheostomy so one of the very first thing I tell the family and that makes them really think about it seriously the patient can be awake with a trick we don't need sedation no sedation required less pain patient can communicate easier weaning sorry less work of breathing the risk of aspiration um, I usually don't include but risk of aspiration is almost the same like ET tube is kind of equivocal to ET tube. There is a debatable things about that. Risk of infection slightly increased in tracheostomy, but I don't think it's any significant. And very important, don't forget till the family is that can stay as long as we need it. Right? And very important to mention that it can be removed as soon as we don't need it. So, and I tell them we should remove the tube and the hole, the stomach closed on its own in a week or two. So it's not permanent most of these cases in icu for prolonged mechanical ventilation we don't know we don't need permanent uh, tracheostomies or uh, stomas so these are very important things to mention to the family and just the fact they are awake with no sedation less pain and then can communicate and can talk sometimes and phonate with a speaking valve and um, will make them a lot happier because they want to communicate uh, with their closed ones, right? And then after the mission, the ET tube, it's the opposite. They have to be sedated and it's make it gives them a lot of pain and being uncomfortable. And that's why we sedate them, give them strong pain medications. And the longer it stays, the, the, the risk of it, which, um, you know, subglottic stenosis um, and the other problems that come with it and then this temporary now will become permanent stoma if we get to this uh, problems but really the main reason with prolonged um, mechanical ventilation because it's not clear when this will happen these are the advantages you know the less work of breathing easier weaning because that means these patients were difficult to wean to start with that they require the being on the ventilator that long so this is the discussion you need to so very important to mention the advantages of this very important to mention these two as well they stay as long as we need and they can be removed and reversible very important to mention that to them also the moment we start the discussion about tracheostomy we should start talking about pick tube and i have a full list of videos i released just before the tracheostomy videos on pick tube including the family discussion so make sure you watch pick tube so we're trying to put a tracheostomy so we want to secure a long kind of term way of nutrition and that's what pick tube is needed for so the way you discuss that with family i explain it on the pick tube videos and both are reversible again the family may opt to go for tracheostomy with that pick tube you still can use ng tube with tracheostomy 
and even patient eventually when they recover from all of this they can swallow and eat with the tracheostomy still uh, in um, so that's very important too when you initiate the discussion with for tracheostomy please initiate the same time for pig tube remember make sure the patient is the right candidate remember the consultants are on the same page this will save you tons of time believe me and now in the next video we'll talk about how to prepare our patient for this from internal medicine from our icu residents perspective and the complication we should watch for and when do we call the surgeon or whom do we call to perform the procedure now the family agreed um, and all of these techniques and we'll give you some details a uh, little details about the tube tracheostomy tubes themselves all right stay tuned thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board